I bet you 10 pounds that you've worried about something in the past, but when it actually came down to it, you realized that it was the thought of it that was the worst bit and not the actual thing itself. Did I win? I hope so, because this is my last tenner. Imagine there's something you're obsessively worrying over, like you've got an interview to go to, or worse, you've got to make a phone call. Heart palpitations, fear paralyzing your body, hands shaking, face sweating, clenched jaw. Then you make the call. And then you realize it wasn't as life threatening as you thought it was. And the person was actually quite nice and the phone call only lasted 30 seconds. And now you're free to move on with your day and you do just that. You carry on emptying the dishwasher. But wait, you just skipped a bit. Go back. There. You just glossed over an important piece of evidence. Did you spot it? And that evidence will change the course of your future forever. <sighs> Too much? Yeah. You just gained evidence to say that you can do it. You can do the hard thing. And it might not be a phone call, it might be traveling on your own. It might be speaking up in a meeting, doing a hard exam, doing a presentation, or doing a load of washing when you feel mentally shit. So often we can gloss over our own accomplishments, but however big or small it is, you now have evidence to say that you can do it. So back in the day when I first started therapy, I'd be saying to my counselor, I can't do this and I can't do that. And after about half hour of me listing the things that I couldn't do, she said this. Okay, can you think of a time when you have done that? I realized, yes, I actually have done this activity before. Like I used to really struggle with making phone calls or going to social events. Like social anxiety be kicking me up the arse breath. Not good. And then she says to me, okay, so what we do is we take that piece of evidence and we put it in the evidence bag to say that you can do it. And I walked out of that session and I just went to myself, well, evidently I can. And that boosted my confidence and my self-belief and it gave me the courage to move forward into these anxiety-inducing situations. So I started writing it down. I made myself a little notebook. Don't judge the design. I didn't know what I was doing back then. And then every time I accomplished something, I would write it down in the notebook, even if it was small. And over time, this turned into an evidence list. And I remember so vividly, I had a job interview coming up that was nerve wracking, like I really wanted the job. So 10 minutes before I took out my evidence notebook and I read through all of the stuff that I had done. And before that, my brain was telling me I wasn't gonna know the answers to the question. I wasn't gonna speak confidently, etc., etc. But when I looked at the list, I had evidence in black and white to say, I can do those things. I had taken calls before without any planning. I had spoken to people confidently. I had done like radio interviews for my cystic fibrosis before. I had done all of these things. I had evidence. And suddenly I wasn't going into that interview empty handed. And no joke, it helped me to relax before I did the interview because I knew that everything I needed was already within me. Why? Because evidently I can. Read the t-shirt, people. You can buy this now at evidently I can. Com .etsy .com. I don't know the address to my Etsy shop. <laughs> and I smashed the interview. Ended up quitting later on, but still smashed it. And once you've done the anxious situation once, there is so much power in highlighting the evidence because your brain listens to evidence. You can slap affirmations at yourself all you like in the mirror, but not until you have evidence will your brain believe you because your brain listens to behavior and not words. So for example, you could say to yourself, I am a confident public speaker. When you've never done an ounce of public speaking in your life, and you're full of social anxiety and you can barely make a phone call. Your brain is going to be like, no, you're not. You can't even pick up the phone. You can't even answer the door to the postman. You can't even ask the shop assistant where the eggs are, even though you've been looking for 24 minutes and you've gone down all of the aisles twice. You're not a public speaker. Your brain is not gonna believe the words, it is gonna believe all of the actions, all of the behaviors that you have demonstrated to it. And don't forget, your brain does tend to naturally lean towards believing the negative behaviors and the positive ones. So that's why a little bit of reinforcement goes a long way. But when you do one of these things and the behavior aligns with the words, it massively elevates the affirmation because now you've got evidence to say you can. And it might be the case that the thing didn't go well. The phone call, you stuttered your way through and you forgot what words were. The postman came and you opened up the door, but then you went bright red. Or the shop assistant, you asked where the eggs were, but your voice cracked. Even if all of that is the case you still have evidence to say you can do it and a bonus tip if you're ever anxious about a situation coming up you're not sure if you should go to this thing or do that thing then you can motivate yourself for the sole purpose of gathering evidence i have done this before and it works like i said even if it doesn't go well it doesn't matter because now you've got the evidence that you needed and don't forget it's a starting point
And from there, you can start to build up the evidence list every time you do something. Every time you get evidence, use it as building blocks to get you one step higher than before. And eventually you'll create this staircase full of evidence, leading you up to where you want to be. And that is set in stone. Those building blocks ain't gonna crumble because evidence doesn't lie. It's a solid foundation. Now, how do I get back to where I was? Better. Funny thing is, I've been using public speaking as an example because one day I'd personally love to be able to do it. Here's the thing, I've got my brother's wedding coming up in a couple of months and I'm the best man. Yes, you heard that correctly, I am the best man, naturally. And I'm meant to give a speech and I'm sitting here thinking, I had never done public speaking before. So how can I launch myself into a wedding speech if I haven't got any evidence? And then it hit me. I have done this before. Just because it doesn't look exactly the same and it's a, not a direct copy of a wedding speech, it doesn't mean that I haven't done it in a different format. Let me explain. Remember back in school when you used to stand up in front of the class and do a presentation? God, I hated those things. I was terrible at it. But I did do it and that is a form of public speaking. So I'm not starting from scratch. I've already got a building block in place. And then I remembered that I also performed in a school play where I had lines. Admittedly, I did forget the lines once and it still haunts me to this day, but I did do it and that is another building block. And I think I've got high expectations of myself to jump into public speaking and speak confidently and not make any mistakes and not have my voice tremble or my hands shake or my mouth go dry like I've just ingested a ton of sawdust and, you know, to actually remember the words. But the reality is I've got to build myself up to that. So if I do this speech at my brother's wedding and all of that happens, it does not matter because I've got the evidence now to say that I can actually stand up in front of people and talk, even if it goes terribly wrong. Ugh, fun. Because that is another massive chunk of evidence to say I can. We believe in the evidence. The evidence doesn't lie, people. I'm just sitting here, I'm writing the script for the video you're currently watching. There's an event coming up next week. Each group of us put on every year for the CF Trust. And I've always wanted to do a speech at it because every year we raise money for the Cystic Fibrosis Trust and I've always just wanted to say thank you. And this time next week, it will be the last, the last ever opportunity to do that. And I've never had the courage to go up and say anything. And now I'm writing this script. It's making me think maybe I can. And if I do do it next week, then that will give me another good chunk of evidence for doing a speech at my brother's wedding. I will keep you updated if anything happens. But now, now with this new treatment, I, I do have a future. So I now have to think about pensions, which <laughs> wasn't on the cards before. So, you know, uh, swings and roundabouts, I guess. So when it came to naming my Etsy shop, there was no doubt in my mind what it should be called because my shop is all about advocating for mental health in an empowering and positive way without showcasing toxic positivity. And evidently I can became my own catchphrase. And you know what's annoying? It's when I'm right, okay? If I'm struggling to open up to my partner, then he says to me, Kay, do we need to look in the evidence bag? Because you know, the last time we had one of these talks, we put evidence in the evidence bag to say that you can open up to me. And I'm like, God damn it, I hate it when it's right. And I hate that I made up something so goddamn useful. He uses my own phrases against me and it's very frustrating. That just proves that it's highly beneficial and I strongly recommend you try using it. Even if you just jot it down in your notes app, pin it to the top so you can find it easier and look at it when you need it. One day my dream is to release a proper journal notebook type thing that will serve as an evidence locker for you. So any investors out there or people who know how to do that, let me know. So even when we do achieve or accomplish something, we often just skate over it and move on to the next thing without taking the time to properly appreciate it and be proud of the thing that we did. And keeping a list like this can help you keep track of the progress you are making and how much you are changing and evolving in your life. And what's more, it can help to solidify the experience so that we savor it, we relish it and we don't completely gloss over it straight away. And this is a technique that I came up with years ago and now I am passing it on to you to say evidently you can. And what's more, there's a really powerful phrase that I use to reframe situations in which I'm dreading, in which I have unnecessary anxiety for, and that is all backed by neuroscience and you can find that in this video right here. And I'll see you in the next one.